Hey guys, so this is 12.2, day three. Today we're going to start talking about um, limits of reciprocal functions at infinity, right? So if you have to find the limit of a reciprocal function, so the limit as x approaches infinity, 1 over x. Well, let's just talk about, I know we've talked about this before, let's talk about it um, graphically. Here we have the graph of f of x equals 1 over x, and we want to look at what happens to this um, as x approaches positive infinity and negative infinity. So you see that the graph here comes down and goes to the right as we go to positive infinity. So as we head on to positive infinity, we see that this levels off at zero. It never approaches zero, but it comes very, very close to zero. Now to the left, we see that it comes up like this, and then again, it levels off as zero. And so we can say that the limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity is zero, okay? All right, um, so algebraically, what does that look like? So if we go back up here, algebraically, we have the limit as x approaches infinity, 1 over x. And now we know as that value of x becomes exceedingly large, right? and if you think about it, 1 divided by a very large number. So if you have one pizza and you're dividing it by a large number of people, one pizza for a million people, everybody gets close to zero. So the limit is zero. All right, so rule of thumb, when you have an excess of variables in the denominator, as the variable gets very large, the limit becomes very small to zero. All right, so let's talk about the limits of rational functions at positive or negative infinity. We're going to do this this exact same way as we did to find horizontal asymptotes. Remember, horizontal asymptotes, right, were defined as y equals the limit as x approaches infinity of some function. So it is exactly the same thing. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to compare the degree of the denominator and the degree of the numerator. So first case scenario is if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the limit is zero. So for example, take a look at this first one. All I do is in this rational function here is just take a look at the degree in the numerator, the highest exponent in the numerator, that's the term x squared. In the denominator, it's x cubed. So what do I have here? This is the limit as x approaches infinity x squared over x cubed. Right? Do you see how you have more x's on the bottom? That means if I simplify this any further, this is going to be the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. And again, as x goes to infinity, the limit of 1 over x is 0. Now, for all intents and purposes, I don't need you to show me all of this. For ones like this, I actually want you to just take a look and just be able to figure it out. So all I need is the final answer. That's good enough for me. Okay, now in the beginning, if you want to write some stuff down, that's fine. You will see that you too um, will begin to do this automatically later on. The second case is if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. In this case, the limit is just the ratio of the leading coefficients. So let's take a look here. I have negative 2x cubed on top, 6x cubed on the bottom. Well, that, right, is you see the x cubes will cancel. So that's just negative 2 over 6, negative 1 over 3. Remember, you have to take the positive, the, the negative sign along with it. Next case is if the numerator has a higher degree than the denominator. In this case, the limit has to go to infinity or DNE. Why? Let's take a look. So here the highest um, exponent is a 5, so that's the leading term. And here, this is the leading term. So what happens here? This is the limit as x approaches infinity 
of x cubed, I'm sorry, x to the fifth over negative x cubed. Notice while I still have my x's in there, I have to put the limit symbol, right? In the first example too, as long as I had x's in there, I never dropped my limit. So now this is going to be the limit as x approaches infinity of negative x squared. And so what happens now as x gets very large? Well, this is going to be negative infinity. That part we already know. So this is going to be negative infinity which is DNE. All right? So this part we've already done and we've already taken a quiz on it. And now what we're doing today is using that. All right, so here let me do some quick examples. Um, so here it's the limit as x approaches negative infinity. The highest term here is a five, which is just a constant over x since we have more x's on the bottom, this is just going to be 0 as x approaches infinity. So if you feel like you have this completely down, you don't need to, you can go on to piecewise functions. I'm going to do parts b and c. In here, the limit as x approaches infinity, negative 3x squared on top, 5x on the bottom. You see you have more x's on top, so this is going to go to infinity. Now, is it going to be positive or negative infinity? Well, I have negative divided by a positive, which is negative, and if I put a positive infinity in there, it's negative infinity. Let's look at that a little bit more closely. If I bring in the terms that I'm looking at, this is the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 3x over 5 and now you can see that as this becomes very very large the limit is going to be negative infinity all right this next one here i have 7x cubed on top 2x cubed on the bottom same degree on top and bottom so this is just the coefficient of the um of the top and the bottom the ratio of the coefficients okay Moving on to piecewise functions. To evaluate limits of piecewise functions, what you have to do is evaluate the left hand and the right hand limits at each partition. Now, if the limit from the left is the same as the limit from the right, then we say that's the value of the limit. Otherwise, it's DNE. All right, so let's take a look at part A. Part A, it seems as if the partition is at x equals 3, right? So do you see how this, right, is the function that's being graphed when x is less than or equal to 3? So to the left of 3. This is the function that's being graphed to the right of 3. So what I need to do first in order to show work is this. The limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the negative side is equal to. And now what I do here is I just evaluate the function, the, the first 2x plus 7 at x equals 3. So I just take this and I plug it in for the x. So I'm going to get 2 times 3 plus 7. This is equal to 13. Next, I'm going to do it for the other side, the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the positive side. For this, I'm going to take 3 and now plug it in here. So I'm going to get 3 squared minus 1, 8. Okay, now you see that the limit from the left is not the same as the limit from the right. Therefore, the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 does not exist. Okay, so it equals DNE. All right, let's go to the next one. We need to find the limit as x approaches 1 of this. So first we have to say limit as x approaches negative 1 from the minus side, and that's that top, right? This is, this is the function that's being graphed to the left. 
So you take negative 1 and you plug it in for all your x's. So the limit at x equals as x approaches negative 1 from the left hand side of f of x is equal to negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1. That's 1 plus 2, it equals 3. The limit as x approaches negative 1 from the positive side of f of x is equal to, now I'm going to take this and plug it in here, 3. You see how they're the same? Um, so I say, therefore, the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 is equal to 3. Now, as an aside, what if on top of this we were asked to evaluate for part A? Well, what if we were asked to evaluate f of 3? Well, in that case, I just take 3 and I plug it into wherever I have an equal sign. So for example, here, it says x is less than or equal to 3, so I plug 3 in there into that function, and I get 13. So that's f of 3. Here, what's f of negative 1? Well, you see here, that's an open circle. Here, that's an open circle. There is no f of negative 1. We say f of negative 1 is undefined. All right, that's it for today. You can go ahead and do the homework. Please make sure you show um, as much work as needed. So, okay, all right.